Welcome to the classroom. Let's talk acrylic paint. These are the supplies that you're going to need and we'll discuss these more in detail throughout the video but if you're an in-person learner they're on the shelves in the tan room in the corner next to the windows. If you're going to paint with acrylic you want a brush that has decent snap because acrylic paint has a heavier body than watercolor you wouldn't want to use a watercolor brush like this, which, when it's wet, tends to just droop and hang to the side. You want something that, when you flick the bristles, they snap back to the shape, and they really help you push the paint around. So use these types of brushes. Avoid watercolor brushes. In terms of a palette, acrylic paint is basically just a plastic. So the easiest thing to think of is we're going to use plastic palettes and plastic palette knives. So you see the palette here, you can see two types of palette knives, straight handled and offset. I prefer an offset palette knife like this. It just helps you mix the paint without your hand coming into contact with the palette and the paint that's on the surface. Now one of the most common questions a young painter asks is what colors do I need on my palette? Well, I would say keep it simple and use only primaries, and here are your two warm primaries, red and yellow, and blue, your cool primary, and then white. Now you could use black or you could use brown as your dark neutral, but just your three primaries and neutrals. That begs the question, however, which primary do I choose? Because if you look at a shelf or at a package of acrylic paints, a lot of times you'll see a whole bunch of reds like you see here. And so making sense of all that can be a little bit difficult. I would just recommend that you pick a red. It doesn't really matter which one you pick, but that you look at the label on that red and you use that red consistently throughout. Again, you'll see multiple yellows. Um, just look at the label. It doesn't really matter which one you pick as long as you consistently use that throughout the course of your painting. So this one is ultramarine. This one is thalo. Just make sure that you look at the label each time and that you're consistent. That will lead you to success in your early paintings. When you set up your palette, keep it consistent just like when you choose your paint put it in the same place every time you want to be kind of boring so that you can be more violent in your work this middle area in your palette is for mixing your paint this outer ring there's a little wall that divides the two that's for your pure colors i like to set up my palette with my lightest value and that's white on the far left and then i like to go darker in value as I move across that outer ring. So my yellow is my next darkest value painting. I like to keep my warm colors together. So I'll go yellow then red and I'm decreasing in value. It's getting slightly darker as we go down. And I like to give a little bit of space here between the two, but notice that I'm putting out plenty of paint. If you put out little tiny bits of paint, you're going to have to reload your palette pretty frequently. And so then my next primary is my darkest. It's my cool. I put this on the far end. This is a little bit like the, the spectrum of the rainbow. That's how I like to arrange my palette. Now notice how chunky that paint is. You will run into consistency problems. If your paint is chunky like that coming out, it's probably bad. You should probably throw it away. Another problem you'll find is that when you pour out from a bottle, sometimes you'll just see clear liquid come out. This is the binder of the paint. You sometimes can avoid that by using tubes, but these bottles of paint, the pigment will settle to the bottom and the binder will float on the top of it. And so you kind of have this clear goo that doesn't really do you any good. So if you happen to have that and you pour it out, just grab a paper towel, wipe that up. It doesn't matter if there's a little left in that little reservoir because that binder is in your paint anyway. Then take your bottle, shake it pretty vigorously. It should work the pigment and the binder back together. And you'll notice that some acrylic paints are runnier than others. This is more like a pool where the others were like little worms of paint. There's no right way or wrong way. Everybody has their own preference. And then finally, at the end of my palette, I put my dark neutrals. Now, black is my darkest, and it is also cool. You could 
by contrast, you could use a brown and you could put it between your blue and your black, or sometimes I'll put it after my red because that keeps the warm color string going. And so this would be my warm, dark, neutral. And sometimes I will put that in between my red and my blue, like you see here. Now when you start painting, you don't just use colors straight out of the tube. That's flat, that's boring, your painting's going to be awful. So you open up your palette. I'm going to take a little bit of this blue. It's kind of chunky, it's going to be hard to work with, but it'll still demonstrate what we're doing here. So I'm going to grab a little bit of this, put it in my middle mixing area, and this is my midpoint. Now I'm going to make lighter versions of this color, and then I'm going to have like an array going to darker. I'm going to clean my palette knife like you see here, so that when I go into my pure colors like my white, it doesn't slowly become more blue. And now with some of this white in my mixing area, I'm going to pull some of the blue over and make a tint of that blue, a lighter version of my blue. I want these pools of related color on my palette so that I can have them throughout the course of the painting. You don't want to mix with a brush because oftentimes the body of the brush, which is right here next to this metal piece called the ferrule, it will get loaded with paint and then it's very hard to deliver that paint. You'd almost have to put the brush flat on your surface to get the paint out of the body of the brush. You really just want to load the paint on the tip of the brush and deliver a stroke. So if you use a palette knife, you avoid all that mess and you can create big bulky puddles of color that you can use to come back to because if you make skin thin little mixtures they just dry really quickly so the palette knife also forces you to make big chunky mixtures that you'll have throughout the course of your painting here i am adding black to my blue so i'm making a shade of the blue color and now i have a mid-tone a lighter version of my blue a tint and i have a darker version a shade of my blue and I really could create an array of this value going from light to mid-tone to dark. Because painting with acrylic is sort of like using colored pencils, but you have to make your own colored pencils. So that when you grab a brush, you maybe commit one brush to your light. You grab a different brush for your mid-tone and a completely different brush for your dark. And then you have those sort of like colored pencils in hand that you can work with. Now some people alternatively will load their brush, clean it out, dry it off, and then switch colors. I prefer to use a dedicated brush for each value, but that's kind of up to you and your personal preference and how much you want to clean at the end of your painting session. So with a clean palette knife, you could go back in and you could create intermediate steps between your lightest tint and uh, your mid-tone. So you just add a little bit more, pull over, and mix the two together, and you get a halfway step between the two. You could do as many steps as you wanted to, but you can also just mix those throughout the course of the painting, having different steps of your value, like you see here. Now I have a, a slightly darker step between my mid-tone and my dark. You just want to set yourself up for success by opening up your palette and having different tints and shades of the colors that you're going to use in the course of your painting. Now of course throughout your painting you're going to run out of room on your palette and that's not a big deal. It's easy to refresh your palette. You just take your palette knife, you scoop up all the color that you had been mixing and had been working with and as long as your paint's fairly thick it's going to sit on your palette knife like this. Just take it over. I would probably take your whole palette so it doesn't drip all over the place but you dump that in the trash there is going to be some waste whenever you paint. There's no real way to help that. You clean off your palette knife, and then you take that same paper towel. If you wanted to, you could dip it in water, and, and that slightly damp paper towel would help clean the surface. And then you just take the rag, and you wipe the surface of your palette, and you reset to mix new colors and keep moving on in your painting. Alternatively, if you have a sink that you don't mind getting a little bit dirty, you could take the palette to the sink, spray off your mixing area, make sure the water doesn't hit your pure colors, and reset your palette that way. Keep a rag handy to wipe any paint off your fingers so that you can work neatly as you go throughout your painting. Now earlier in this video I said that you just need to pick primaries and neutrals for your palette, and it doesn't matter which primary it is as long as you're consistent from one session to the next. But eventually you're going to want to match a specific color. When you do, think first in terms of value, and then in terms of temperature, and finally in terms of chroma. But if you're trying to match a specific color, 
you're going to have various outcomes based upon the primaries that you're using. So here we have several blues, and I just want you to be aware that each of these blues, if they were completely different, now these are both ultramarine, this one is phthalo blue, and these terms are pretty consistent through different brands and manufacturers who make paint, but you will find a pretty notable difference between ultramarine and phthalo when you use those for mixing. Now this chunky blue is ultramarine. I'm going to add phthalo blue, give it a shake, throw it on my palette, and put them side by side. You'll see I have three different manufacturers of ultramarine. They all look basically the same, but next to it you have this phthalo blue, which is somehow different. Now we want to start to understand the difference between these blues. If you were to take a picture with your phone, switch it to mono, you would see that the value is the same, but if I take the glint off this, what's the difference that we're seeing here? Since blue is a darker color, sometimes it's easier to see the difference if you add it with white, and you'll begin to notice a little bit more of that distinct character of the color. So here's ultramarine mixed with white, and we have a tint of that blue, but we want to compare it with the phthalo. Clean my palette knife so that we're not muddying those colors at all. Grab some of the phthalo, grab some white, add it too, and when you mix the tint of the phthalo, hopefully you begin to see the character of the color a little bit better. Now those two are lighter, you see a sort of different undertone in the color, and that's what we're going for. So if you were to look at the phthalo, how would you characterize that compared to the ultramarine? You might say that the phthalo is a little bit more green kind of blue, and the ultramarine is a little bit more of a purple kind of blue. With red and yellow, you can say that those primary colors are both warm, but blue really can't be any warmer. It can lean toward purple or lean toward green, but those are still relatively cool colors. But what you see here is phthalo blue related to ultramarine blue. You'll get a difference of its initial basis, more green or more purple. Now that plays out when you start adding other colors. If you're hoping for a green that's really intense with ultramarine, ultramarine, since it has some red in it, which is the complement of green, it's automatically going to dull down that green. It won't be quite as intense. If you take phthalo green and you add yellow to it, and of course I'm breaking my own rule here and not cleaning my palette knife, but if you add yellow to a phthalo blue, you're going to get an intense green that hasn't been dulled down by that red because that red isn't present in the blue. I know that that seems like a, a bizarre concept at first, but the primaries that you choose are going to give you different outcomes. So ultramarine is a duller green, whereas phthalo blue will be a more intense green. It may not matter to you a whole bunch when you first start painting, but if you're wanting to have more controlled color outcomes, the primary that you choose matters. You're really only going to begin to understand that as you experiment, so try different things, enjoy the process, and be aware that to some extent your primaries do matter. At the end of the day, you're going to have to clean your palette. This is very similar to resetting your palette. You'll take your palette knife, scrape off everything that you used, try to get as much paint off of your palette, scraped into the trash can. Don't just rinse big fat globs of paint down your sink, that'll clog your pipes, nobody wants that. So try to get as much into the trash as possible and then you can wash the rest off with water.